Welcome to Believer's Youth Camp 2023. Seems like it was just a few weeks ago we were here. In 2022, time sure flies. You can be seated real quick. How many of you, or this is your first time to have come to youth camp, Believer's Youth Camp? Stand, stand back up. So we're, we're, we're not going to do Father Abraham yet, but that'll be later in the week. But okay, all right. We want to welcome all of you. If this is your first time to Believer's Youth Camp, so uh, you can be seated. Amen. <clears throat> so some of you may have an older brother or sister that's been here, and they've probably told you stories. Those are stories. 11 o'clock, curfew. When you go to your dorm, you stay in the dorm till breakfast time. Okay? Those other things are stories. So, all right, well, welcome, and for those of you that this is your first time, uh, just going to go through just a few things to help get you acquainted with uh, wh how things go here at camp and uh, what we do. If you came and thought we were going to canoe every day, um, you read the wrong brochure, and we don't have a canoe. We don't even have a, we do have a paddle, but we don't use it for the canoe. <laughs> you can figure the part, other part out. All right, so... This is a church camp, and so we do have church services, and so tonight is the first service, so tomorrow morning <coughs> we'll have service at 9.30, <coughs> excuse me, and then tomorrow evening at 6.30, and that'll be each day, 9.30 in the morning, 6.30 in the evening, we'll be having services. I will get them posted later tonight, but in the as you go into the dining hall across the road, there uh, will be some posters hanging that'll give you uh, different events and things that's going to be happening during the week. Uh, the weatherman has told us that it was going to rain all day today, and so as you see all, it didn't rain all day. It rained all night last night, but uh, we do have some activities prepared for that day that it, if it does uh, rain, so we'll be uh, doing some things during the afternoon, but uh, if for those of you that would like to get up early and eat breakfast, uh, the cooks, they have to sleep a little bit, and so they're not going to serve breakfast until 7.30. I know McDonald's opens at 6, but they're going to open at 6.30 here and the Pulse, Pulse, sorry, I can't read my own writing, 7.30, 7.30 a.m. will be breakfast, uh, will be the serving time in the mornings, so get up early, or if you get up late, you're going to get those bowl of cereal, okay, so get there early. Also, lunch is going to be served each day after the morning service, usually around 11.30 to 12 uh, will be lunch being served, and then also dinner will be served each day at 4.30, that'll be when it'll start. And uh, so make sure you uh, keep track of all those. For those of you that have never been here before, we do have a camp choir. And so if your mother ever told you that you could sing, uh, you don't have to audition for this choir. You can come every day at 4 o'clock. There will be choir practice right here in the auditorium for choir that will sing that evening. Um, so remember those things. A couple just uh, brief notes, and there's going to be some things your leaders will cover with you in the dorms later. But... Uh, as we mentioned, when we go into the cabins at night for curfew, we stay in the cabins. They have bathrooms. They have running water. So there's no need for you to have to come out of the cabin at night. So make sure that you abide by that, and we'll get along real well. Also, uh, been told already we've had three spills over in the gym, and so we're going to implement the policy, no open containers in the gym. So if you've got your favorite slushy drink or whatever, stay outside until you get it drunk and do not take it in the gym. Uh, we don't want red Kool-Aid stains on the floor. And then also for here in the services, uh, we do ask that the brothers would sit on this side. The sisters, you sit on this side and uh, don't uh, mix up and that way you're not distracted during the services. That way you can kind of keep your attention on the things of the Lord and not uh, the person sitting next to you and smelling the, his lack of cologne or whatever it is. All right, so, um, okay, I think that's all the preliminaries that we have. If you have your Bibles tonight, this is church camp, so I hope you brought your Bible. If you didn't see me, some of you have left Bibles. In fact, I have one that I will get. Uh-oh, somebody's pointing you out. Uh-huh. Um, I know one of you left your Bible last year, and I will dig it out, and I'll get it to you in the morning because I did find one the other day. Um, but if you don't have a Bible, come see me. We have Bibles that were left last year, and we will get you a Bible so that you won't be the odd duck like this young man over here that just got pointed out. All right, so we're going to do a little quiz this evening. 
Um, where's 1 Corinthians? Which part of the Bible is that in? Oh, it's in the New Testament. All right, so that's your helper. So tonight we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. And so as we have prepared for camp this year, and as we live in the, in the hour in which we live, this is the theme that stood out this year for camp. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. We're going to stand in honor to God's word. And that's something that we we honor here. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 22. So the way we're going to do this, I know some of you may not be familiar with this, but we're all going to read it aloud. Okay? All right, is everybody ready? All right, I hear pages turning. It's in the New Testament. It's in the right section. Okay. All right, I don't hear any more pages. All right, everybody found it. All right, and the Scripture says, For as in Adam all die." Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. And that's our theme this week, alive in Christ. That's our desire, that you be alive in Christ. There's many things in the world that we can be, but I believe that's our desire tonight. We want to be alive in Him. And that's our theme this week, and we're thankful for each one of you that have come. If you do need anything tonight, uh, after the service, seek me out. I'll be out there, and we'll... Make sure that you have a pillow or whatever it is you need of tonight. And um, just believe in the Lord for, for good things this week, what he will do. And uh, as we've come here from all over different parts of the world, we have some here from the country of India. We have some from the country of Canada. We haven't had any of the, our brothers and sisters from up north for a few years because of COVID. And uh, we're glad that the, they were able to make the journey, and so we're, they're with us. We have some that are from the west. We have some that are from the south. And there's a little song that we often sing. It says, they come from the east, the west. They come from the lands afar. And this year, we can say that is true because our brother just flew in Wednesday all the way from India just to be with us here in youth camp this week. And so we're thankful for each of you that have come. There's been a lot of sacrifices, a lot of obstacles that people have had to overcome to be here. But as one songwriter said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. We serve a great big God. They come from the east and west. They come from the lands afar To feast with the king, to dine as his guest How blessed these pilgrims are Beholding his hallowed face Aglow with light divine Blessed partakers of his grace As gems in his crown do shine since Jesus has set me free, I'm happy as heart can be. No longer I bear the burden of care, his yoke is so sweet to me. My soul was as black as night, but darkness has taken light. And now I shout the victory, for Jesus has set me I was watching some of you as you came in this afternoon and I didn't see too big a smile some of you were smiling but some of you you come you look like you had a burden on your back and as we've sung the song tonight my soul was black had burdens and maybe that's the way you came to camp but it's my desire that when you become alive in Christ he said take my yoke upon you I, my desire this week we can have a great time but the most important thing in life is to know him you can be seated again if you'd like tonight and as we think of the goodness of the Lord and what he's done I'm going to ask Brother Noel Johnson to come up tonight and God's faithfulness to us how he's provided and he's brought us and there's been many obstacles and many things that we've had to overcome but it's brought us here 
But I believe it's our desire tonight as we have gathered here. We want to set our affection on him. We just want to dedicate this place, this campground this week to God's being able to move in our lives. You know, last night I was here at midnight. I thought there was there were tiki torches lit everywhere and a big dinner. But I believe it's our desire tonight to dine as his guest, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Maybe tonight as you come, there's a weight that you say, I, I want to get rid of this burden. Tonight, let's just lay it at his feet. We're going to ask Brother Noel to come and just open the camp meeting tonight in a word of prayer. I would ask you just to remember my father. Many years ago, my father had a vision for young people. It's his desire. He'd like to be here tonight, but last night we had to take him to the hospital. But God is still a healer. Some of you may not know, but my father had a stroke just a couple months ago. And I've got to see the miraculous hand of God working in his life the last couple of months, real up close and personal. I've seen when he couldn't write his name, and I saw it when God restored it. Just the other day, it seemed like a simple thing. Most of you young men can start a lawnmower and mow grass. Dad couldn't get the tiller to start. But I saw how the Lord touched him, and just a couple weeks later, he was able to do it again. We serve a great and mighty God. So when somebody says that the days of miracles are past or things don't happen like that anymore, I've got a front row seat the last few weeks to see it real close and personal. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did for me in the 80s, he can do for you tonight. Let's all just bow our heads in prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, it is our privilege to gather ourselves together for the sole purpose of worshiping you. We've come, Lord, the youth has come, Lord, with anticipation, because, Lord, the camp has always been set aside as a meeting place to meet you. And, Lord, we, never, we haven't been disappointed in the past, and I don't believe we'll be disappointed now. Because, Lord, the desire of the heart of the children of God is to know you, to get to know you, to have an intimate, personal relationship with you. And, Lord, we've seen in our church and other churches around, we've seen you perform miracles. Lord, we've seen you taken some and that have been blind, you've given them sight. We've seen some that have been crippled, you've allowed them to walk. We've seen others which have been, which have been afflicted, Lord, and we've seen you t touch their bodies and to heal them and to make them every whit whole. And so you're the same God. You are the mighty God that we worship. You're the mighty God that we serve. And, Lord, we've come this evening, Lord, so that we can take and from our hearts we can lift up songs of worship and praise and adoration unto you and take the camp that we has begun, Lord, and we want to begin it right. We want to begin it in worship and praise and adoration unto you, and we want to dedicate our lives, Lord, to that sole purpose. So, Lord, as the, as the young people are here, I'm asking you, Lord, in your mercy and grace to move upon each heart and each life that, Lord, they could have that personal experience with you that will change their lives forever. That will make it so that you begin to anchor yourself in their hearts. And, Lord, when you anchor yourself in their hearts, Lord, that's when the change begins. Others, Lord, we've already been Christians. We've been Christians. We've, alert, we've accepted you before as our Savior. But, Lord, the, the time that we're living in now, Satan is the one that's in control. We look at what goes on in our own nation, Lord, and we realize that, that, God, you've taken your hand off of this nation. This nation sits under judgment. I've been in India, Lord, and I've seen your, your hand of judgment upon the nation of India. It's upon the face of the whole world. But, Lord, you have a bride. And, Lord, you're trying to take that bride and bring us to the place of perfection. You say we are predestined to, to come to adoption. And, Lord, now is the time and now is the hour. So, Lord, take those as we've gathered here, Lord. I'm asking your presence to be, for, to be not only in the sanctuary here, but, Lord, as they go into the dorms, Lord, may your presence be there. As they gather together in, in, the, in, the, in the dining hall, may your presence be there. And, Lord, wherever they may go, whatever they may do, 
Lord, may you be the central theme of their whole lives. So bless this, this, bless this camp. Bless the people that have come. And Lord, above all things, anoint each and every one and draw each and every one of us that much closer unto you. For I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. For those of you that come and your workers this year, if you will meet with me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, uh, we're going to meet over in, there's a building kind of off to our right. Uh, it looks kind of like, well, I used to call it Pizza Hut, but people won't even know what that means anymore. It's like my kids, they saw a rotary phone the other day, and they asked me what that was. They thought it was something new. Um, but uh, anyway, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, for those of you that are signed up as workers, if you'll meet me over there and we'll go over what tasks we need help with. Also, if anybody's available tonight, we're going to be short-staffed tonight with the snack bar uh, after the evening service because some of the folks aren't going to be here until tomorrow. So if anybody can help us with that tonight, that would be appreciated. Also, if you brought one of these things here, talking about not knowing, my grandma would not know what to do with this. She's 98 years old, and she wouldn't know what to do with it. So I'm going to ask you not to know what to do with it this week. I'm going to ask you, first of all, if you got one with you tonight, turn the ringer off so that we don't have any distractions. Also, uh, I would urge you to just turn it off, put it in your suitcase for the week. You'll find that uh, you'll get to know people. I was somewhere the other day, and I saw two people sitting on a couch. And they was texting away. Well, finally, it dawned on me. They were texting each other. And they were sitting on a couch. And I thought, neither one of them was a mute. So they should have been able to talk. But So anyway, I want to urge you, stay off social media this week. Uh, don't want you out posting things out on uh, social media from camp while camp's going on. I ask you to refrain from that. And uh, I've heard testimonies come back in years past. Sometimes people didn't realize how much they were addicted to that little gadget. And uh, when they got home, they thought, wow, I got more time. So I just ask you to refrain from that this week. And... Um, and um, don't be posting any pictures or anything like that from camp on social media this week. I know there's another announcement that I missed, but uh, tonight I think they selected some ushers for those of you that uh, have not been here before. Your camp fees are paid by uh, what you paid. For that covers that great mattress and, that you have and uh, the facilities and your meals and everything. But we do take offerings during the services, and these offerings are for the ministers that have come to labor and to uh, carry God's word here this week. So I'm going to ask the ushers if they'll come. I think somebody pre-selected some for tonight <coughs> as they're coming to lift the offering this evening. As we mentioned, that offering will go for those ministers that are going to be ministering to us this week. For those, again, that haven't been here before, we're all going to have services together uh, tonight and, and both services tomorrow. And for those of you that are in dorms that are aged 10 to 13 on Monday, you will be going over to the, uh, the building off to the right over here and having services there. And then also those that are 19 and over uh, will be having services over in the gymnasium in the mornings only. So it'll be a little different. All right, well, thank you for these brothers stepping up. They've been drafted into the Army. Um, speaking of the Army, who's in, uh, any of you in Brother Gibbs' cabin? Okay, all right, so he, we do have a soldier. Okay. Let's all bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here. I ask you please bless this service, bless these tithes and offerings, dear God. And we're so thankful to be here. And we just know you're such a great God, and anything we desire, you can do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> we all come from different churches, different places. Some of them from up Canada, they sing a little different than we do. Some of you that are from Carolina, you sing songs a little different. And so this week, we're all from different places. And so some of you will clap on the offbeat, some of you clap on the beat. And so everybody's got a little difference. But you know, there's one song that we all know. And as we're here this week, and we don't, sometimes we don't know the same songs that each other knows, but there's one song that we all know, and we've learned it from a, a young age. And so tonight we're just gonna, we're gonna start off with that because when we came to camp, that's our desires. We came here to have these services to commune with our Lord. Not just to hear from Him, but we also wanna 
commune back to him and talk to him. You know, back in the original, and when we read in the, the Old Testament there in the first book of the Bible, it talks about he would come down and he would talk to Adam, and Adam would talk to him. And tonight as we've gathered here, we want to worship him and to give him praise. And this little chorus, it, it, you, I think you all know the words, but it says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. our desire this week as we gather together in these services. We want to talk about him and talk to him and to hear from him. When the word comes forth, we don't say, well, that's for her or that was for him. One guy said, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need. Ask David Crushane to come. I believe he has a song tonight as he's coming to sing. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of kings. As I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance everything's gonna be alright. Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able and I'll go down in defeat. And he says to you, remember where I brought you from 
Just take a look behind you and see how far you've come. Oh, and every time you ask me, did I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water and I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a whole. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord. Six days is not that long. She hears a voice so soft and low. He says, I've moved like that before. I'll do this little thing, child, and I'll give you so much more. Didn't I walk on the water and I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you? When you call, I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you. And I do it all again. And he did it all for me. Each drop of blood he shed for each. your desire tonight, I believe, as our brother comes to deliver what the Lord has for us tonight. He's come all the way from Texas 
Now give us what the Lord has tonight. Let's just stand as we just sing it. Lord, prepare to be that sanctuary. I want to be pure. Him tonight, amen. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Amen. Before we go any further, let's just talk to him for a few moments. I know there's been a lot of preparation and a lot of things going on, and but I know I know you've come here for a reason. I, I trust it's the right reasons. Amen. I'm glad you're here, but I'm glad he's here. Amen. So before before we do this, do you have something in your heart? Whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. That you know that during these meetings that God, that God can meet. Would you just give it to him now by lift, uplifted hand? Say, Lord, I have a need. You know, the ministries that are here this weekend, we're not here to wow you with eloquent words. That would not help. We just want to say, God, use us to meet needs. I don't know your life. In fact, I honestly can't see you right now. I really can't see you. I don't know your life, but God does. And that's the one that I want to talk to. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this privilege to come together. Lord, and I don't want this to just be a common statement that we use, but I truly believe it's brothers and sisters of like precious faith. Father, I pray, God, that you would just come now and that you would calm the nerves. Father, that your peace would just come through this place, Lord. Many have traveled, Father. There's a lot of preparations, Lord, things that have needed to be done. There's tired bodies, tired minds, just so much, Lord, that everybody is going through. But now we're here at this appointed time to come and to push away the world, push away all of those things and say, Lord, I want to sit at your feet and I want to hear from you. 
Lord, I pray that you would move in a special way, Father, tonight. And God, that you would touch every heart through these meetings. I surrender my thoughts to you, Father, and ask that you would speak in a special way. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, they left. Wonderful. My wife, uh, would you please come for me? Um, you can be seated for a few moments. I just want to, I, I, I need to get myself comfortable. Is that all right? All right. Let me, I heard the brother say, you say, why are you doing this? Because I'm trying to see who's here. I honestly can't, I wasn't kidding when I said I can't see. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't want to see your faces if I say something wrong. I heard the brother say something about asking for pillows. And I thought, well, I hope it's, you don't need one right now. Please, please don't ask for a pillow now. I knew that, that that's not what he meant, but I'm, I'm just trying to break the ice with you here. The thought that the Lord has laid upon our heart tonight is just something simple that we had feel just to get started. And I just want to sing this song. How many knows the song, Consume Me, Lord? Just a simple chorus. Great, wonderful. If you don't, well, you're going to learn it now. It's just a simple chorus. Uh, and I know the brother said we sing things different from all over, and that's, that's the truth. You know, we sing Amazing Grace differently from different state, it seems. You know, but I think the spirit stays the same. You know, it's not about how good we sing or how loud or how quiet we are as long as our heart is open for the Lord. Now, I don't know why you're here tonight, but I pray that we, have, that we have come for the Holy Spirit to move and prick our hearts by the speaking of the word. Let's just sing this together. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Oh, consume me, Lord, with the fire of your Spirit. Consume me, Lord, and make me more like you. Oh,
I want to be used by you, Lord. I want to wash the things of the world off. You know, the whole thing, and you you understand the whole foot washing situation, you know, the foot washing flunky, as Brother Branham called it. And You know, you might be the best Christian. You might be completely filled with his presence on, on your way for a rapture. But you know, just walking through the dusty streets of life, going through the things you don't intend to see, but things are thrown at your face, billboards, just the struggle, the news, the battles, just walking through the dirty streets of life. You have to. You come into a building like this and you just say, Lord, just wash me. Wash my feet, Lord. I, I want to enter into your presence, Lord. And I don't intend for those things to be in my life. I don't want those things, but they just stick to me, just like dirt. Dirt sticks to you, and those things stick to you. You say, oh, I'm the best. I don't need that. No, you're not coming into his presence until you can come and say, Lord, just wash those things off. And then let the peace of God just come in your life. That's my heart desire. Let's just sing peace, peace, wonderful peace. I'm not trying to take your time. I'm, I'm understanding, but just peace. Peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Oh, sweep over my spirit forever. tonight and I appreciate the the invitation from our brothers and uh, I just know that the confidence is not in man the confidence is in God and I, everywhere I go I say the same thing and it's you know if I say something that might be different from maybe what your pastor is well just go with your pastor is that all right you know we all here are, 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 are to bind together around this one common thing. And brothers and sisters, we need to be filled with his presence. Amen. And so we're not here to, uh, to deter you or to have a fight. We're here to let God just move and prick our hearts and draw us closer to him. And greetings from Amarillo, Texas. I know I, I probably don't know about 99% of you and you don't know me, so good luck with that. You're going to find out who I am tonight. But greetings from Amarillo, Texas, from Life Tabernacle there. And um, my grandfather, Brother Lewis Clark, started the church uh, a little over 50 years ago. And um, uh, we, by the grace of God, have um, now pastoring there. And so we just thank you for your, your prayers for us, and we're praying for you. Amen. Right now, they're having church at the same time. Brother, my uh, great brother, Brother J.R. Reek, is ministering, and my associate pastor, and I sure appreciate him very much. So greetings from them. Matthew 19, 16. Uh, it's just something that we're going to read through verse 26 as we start this uh, uh, meetings off. We know this story, but it's just what the Lord laid upon our heart. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now this young man saith also, or saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So we understand that this man uh, is a, can we just put, he's a churchgoer, he's religious. He's, he has fulfilled these, the commandments. He has fulfilled the law. Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell all, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? You ever been in a church service and you wondered? (laughs) Are you out there? You ever been in a church service and you wondered, Dear Lord, is there any hope for me? I mean, come on, this had to have been something serious going on. But I like what he said. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Men, God bless you. You can be seated. As we start this out, the Lord laid this thought, simple thought on my heart entitled, Empty Me. Empty Me. Now, why would this be important? This camp, as with any camp, has been set aside to focus, perhaps, and to regroup. This camp has been going since, I believe, somewhere in the 80s, a long time. And uh, before you were born, many of you were, were born. And as you can, as I could sense the, uh, if you would, the, the burden of our brother as he was standing here, and, and you could just sense the, the heartfelt desire for the youth from his father to him and the many ministers that have ministered throughout this camp. Now, many maybe you have come tonight and you have come for a refreshing. Maybe you have come to this meeting for a refreshing. Maybe you have come for new beginnings. Perhaps you've just come to build relationships, build your relationship with Christ or to have build relationship with one another. Perhaps you're here and you're searching for answers. Perhaps you've here come for a fight. Or, as we would say, maybe there's stream fighters on right now. (laughs) Hallelujah, anyhow. I don't know if you ever heard of the old saying, street fighter. I just changed it to stream fighter. Wherever you are, what are you doing? Why are you here tonight? And I don't want you to say, because my daddy made me or my mommy made me. Maybe they did, and I'm glad. But what is your purpose? I'm asking a lot of questions tonight. I really want you to stop. Can I just tell you to stop? Your mind's thinking, uh, 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 did I get everything set up? What dorm am I in or what bed am I in? Where's my friend? What's going on? Uh, perhaps you're here and you're thinking about your finances or you're thinking about your, uh, uh, your next, uh, uh, what your next job is going to be. All of these things. Uh, who am I going to marry? I mean, what's going on? Can you just stop for a moment? Literally just stop what you're thinking. Say, God, why am I here? If you're writing it down, ask, write it down right now. Why am I here? If you don't have anything to write down, seriously ask yourself the question, why have I come to these meetings? What can I get out of these meetings? God has orchestrated these meetings at this time. Satan Satan is against it, but God is for it. There is a battleground that has been set in this message. Uh, There is fights on either side of what this should be and what that should be. And if we're not careful, we're going to be caught in the crossfire of it. And I say, let's just stop it all for a moment. Let's not try to figure out which side we're on. And just come and sit at Jesus' feet tonight. You know, none of that's... what, What do you think Satan's trying to do? He's trying to weaken us by getting us to fight against one another, getting young people against young people. It's becoming a spiritual civil war. And brother against brother, sister against sister, and Satan will win the battle if we don't stop. Say, Lord, I just need you. It's all about our rights, isn't it? That's what the spirit of this age is, Laodicea. The, uh, it's, it's my right to prove that this is right. It's my right to do this. It's my right to fight this. It's my right. Well, listen, brothers and sisters, let's just, let's just come before the throne with humility. So why are you here? What is your purpose? And 
Maybe you're asking yourself, can God actually do something for me? Do you not know what I've done? Do you not know the mistakes that I've made? Do you not know the iniquity that's in my life, Brother Jeremy? Do you not know the, the, the struggles that I'm facing? Brothers and sisters, if you knew my life, and perhaps sometime during these meetings I will testify to you, some of the things that I've been through, I do not belong here. You say, what do you mean by that? Did you do something that would pull you away from the pulpit? No, that's not it. But everything that Satan and that hell could throw against me, I, I would be in a grave right now if not for the hand of God. Are you afraid of something tonight? Are you actually afraid to let go? Are you afraid that if you let go, you're, you're afraid what somebody may say? Uh, 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 are, you, are you caught between decisions? Are you struggling for the next step? Do you feel all alone? You know, you can be here tonight in this crowd and still be alone. I know what it's like to be, to sit right where you're sitting and feel alone. To put on this facade, to put on this, this, this show that you're all right and that you're in the message and that you believe that God sent a prophet, but, the, but you're all alone. Do you feel that way tonight? You see, Satan loves to come during these meetings. He was attacking you the last week, and he was fighting against your mind, and he was fighting against your life. But right when you get into a service, he backs off, and you actually feel good. This is why you can't live your life by emotions, because you can't just say, I feel good tonight and be okay. I want you to remember what you've been going through during these meetings. I want you to remember that God has sent these ministers to speak to you during this time. I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know. We don't get together in these rooms and discuss what God has laid upon our heart. We don't sit there and say, no, this is what you're going to do and this is what you're going to do. We don't have any idea, but we have one common thing, and that's Almighty God. That we believe that He is a mighty God and that He can speak directly to your mind. But you have to empty yourself. Are you hurting tonight? Are you hurting? Have you been hurt in your life? Are you going through these struggles? You say, I want to be, I, I want to be so excited. I do too. But sometimes to have healing, you got to go to Dr. Jesus. You got to go to the hospital and you got to go through that, uh, t the testing time. What's wrong? There are many more questions that we could ask. And perhaps there's questions already in your mind that God knows you have. And I promise you tonight, you see, I'm not asking for your amens and I'm not asking for your excitement. I'm asking for you to open your heart for God because he's the only one here tonight that can meet your need. And I promise you, I'm standing here tonight with the absolute promise and trust that he is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I don't want that just to be cliche. I don't want that just to be something that we use to get an excitement. But if I am here and God has touched my life, I promise you that if you surrender your heart and you're honest with God, that he can do something for you. I promise you. Say, Brother Jeremy, what if he doesn't? Then it's only you that can stop him. Think of the woman who needed help from the prophet. She was down to her last meal and they were going to die. We find this in 1 Kings 17, 11, and, and uh, uh, can I just read this together, or just read this, and she was going to fetch it, and, and, he, and he called her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a, morse, a morsel of bread in thine hand, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruse, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. They were in, a, they were in dire straits. Difficult situation. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first. Well, that's kind of conceited. Well, we would think that in our carnality. And bring it unto me, and after, and after make for thee and for thy son. Wait a minute, you didn't hear what I just said. I said that I only have one. And you're saying that you want me to make it for you first. And then me. For thus saith the Lord. 
Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth the rain upon the earth. So now we hear that the word of God has come forth, and now you have to have faith enough to empty yourself of everything, surrender your heart to God. You say, God, I have nothing left to give you tonight. I'm tired. I'm worn down. I'm broken. I'm confused. There's so much going on. I'm hearing this. I'm hearing this. Stop and trust him. Can you trust him tonight? And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. How do you make it, Brother Jeremy? How do you do it with the struggles and the tragedies and the sickness? I don't know. But I know a God. You say, oh, uh, you want to you know where all the, the great miracles are happening? Listen, let me just tell you something about wonderful miracles. Miracles are, are not always just those that the cancer falls off. To me, what I love to see of a miracle is that somebody goes through sickness and pain and tragedy and is still standing. When I still see young people that are, are hurting and broken, but they still carry their Bibles and they go to church and they say, God, I know you're doing something for me. It's not about just seeing all of these great things but I'm trusting your word Lord if I have to enter into heaven halt and lame and blind I know as soon as I walk through those gates uh, all will be made right that's the miracle is that you're still standing I know what it's like to have miracles. I've seen miracles. I've seen leukemia healed instantly through a communion line. I've seen healings in my life in, in, in instant moments. I've seen these things. But also what I have seen and what stirs me the most is for those people who, to go through tragedy and trial. And they say, I'm not giving up. How do you do it? It's not religion. Listen, it's not, it's not religious attitudes, but it's a humble spirit, someone that's been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost that knows that they know that it's not their mind and it's not their doing and it's not their emotion, but it's their simple trust in the Almighty God. But can I be empty tonight and say, or have you come tonight and say, you know what, I don't, I'm just here. I got all I need. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. Well, let me just tell you something. I'm still here, so that must mean there's more for me to have. Do you really think that God would leave us here just for no reason? They're still growing. They're still learning. They're still a one more soul. Wouldn't it be awesome if this is the camp meeting that gets the last one? Well, I'm glad somebody's excited. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. So, you see, it's not according. Listen, I want you to understand it's not by a man. It's not by a following. It's by the word of God. It has nothing to do. Well, you say, I went through a prayer line and I, and I was healed. It was brother so-and-so. Is this? No, it wasn't. It was almighty God that was in that prayer line. Oh, so well, if I can only have so-and-so lay their hands upon me. Listen, I got more confidence sometimes than a praying mother. Hallelujah. I, listen, you mothers, you can lay your hands on your children, and they can be in, uh, uh, simply healed. You young people can lay your hands on one another. I got nothing wrong with seeking out an elder. That's not that's the scripture. But listen, the word of God can be in your life where you have enough faith inside of you to say, you know what? Let's pray together and see what God can do. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thinking about this as we are continuing, it says, Brother Branham, in enticing spirits is like, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see, not the kingdom of God or a little noise, not the kingdom of God and a little emotion, not the kingdom of God and a little this or that, but God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. He said, notice, but first. Now that widow heard that. But first. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. She said, that's the word of the Lord, for that's a holy man of God. That's God's prophet, and I know it's the truth, and that's the word of God. Now, she didn't run across a to ask the neighbors how to do it. Right. Is this true? Is this true? Can God still do this? No, no, no. Do you have enough confidence? Oh, 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 I, it has to be so and so. No, it just has to be God. You see, I've seen God move in a, in, in a five-person church service. 
Come on, brothers and sisters. I've seen God move. You say, well, we can't have God move unless our church is packed out. Well, then you're telling me that God can't move you in your car when you're driving down the road and you're just driving and, and then all of a sudden the presence of God begins to come in. You say, oh God, you can't come now because there's not enough people in here. No, when God's presence begins to move in that car, man, they're looking at you. They're, you know, they're driving and they're all boom bopping and this and the other and you're just sitting there and your tears are flowing down your face and you look like, why are you crazy? I don't know, but all I know he is here. Listen, tonight what's important is he must come. And there's got to be young people that are hungry for him to come. Not just hungry for a song. Not just hungry for a moment. Not just an anointing junkie. But somebody that's coming here for the presence of God to break us and change us and mold us in his image. That's what I want tonight. Listen, I was, I was, I was born and raised uh, in a message church. I cut my teeth, if you would. Hallelujah, anyhow, where am I putting this? That works. I cut my teeth in a message church. I've seen the power of God. I've seen his mighty acts. But I had to find it for myself. I sat there and I heard the word of God. I heard God sent a prophet. I've seen it for myself. I've seen the opening of the word. I was blessed by it. But see, I couldn't just take it from my, my pastor and just take it for myself. I had to take it from the hand of God. I can't just take it from my Sunday school teacher because we've got to be convinced that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever ourselves. Because what happens when that man that you have confidence in dies? Help us. I am all over the book tonight, folks. I don't even know where I'm at. But let's just do it anyhow. Hallelujah. What did Brother Branham say? He said, he said the, the preacher's over uh, to my house saying this. Susie, what, what, what do you think about this? No, she went ahead and began to dump out. She let go. She let go of what she had that she could get more. I said she let go of what she had so she could get more. That's what the world needs today is a good old-fashioned letting go of what you got. Hallelujah. She dumped out so she could get filled. She dumped all the oil she had. Oh, you see what you're saying tonight? I want you to catch what I'm saying. I'm not saying that things that you have to dump out is bad. But sometimes you have to pour everything out so there can be a refreshing Lord, just overflow. That old song that's been sung, uh, my cup overflows. Uh, the Lord, just let it, just pour that oil all over me. I, I want that cup to overflow in my life. She dumped it all there. God come down and filled up the meal barrel and filled up the oil jug. She dumped it again in the preacher's face. Hallelujah. I'd love it if you did that tonight. <laughs> Are you still here? I'd love it if you dumped that oil in my life tonight. Just dump it on my face. Just throw that oil at me. Why? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Why? Because we're doing this together. I'm giving you all I've got. Not so that you can just sit there and do nothing. I give you all I got. You give me all you got. Then he gives us all he has. Oh, brothers and sisters, let's have that happen in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. She dumped all of that. And when she dumped it all in there, God come down and filled up the meal barrel and filled up the oil jug. She dumped it again. Oh, I'm reading it all over again. Every time she dumped, he filled. I'll say today, if a man will dump out all his nonsense of carrying on and impersonating Christianity and let the Holy Ghost take its place, it is not time to play church. It is not time. Listen, I played church when I was a kid, and my parents thought it was good. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? They thought it was cute. Man, I, I was as a little boy, and I was preaching, wrote down notes. My little brother was out there. We were singing. My wife, uh, before she was my wife, little kids, and we filled up this little tiny hallway in a mobile home, and we had church after church. Listen, that's all fine and dandy, but there had to come a point in time when it was more than just playing church. Listen, I'm, I would rather you do that when you're a kid than anything else. There's something in your heart, a desire that says, God, I just want more of you. Oh my, we got to get rid of this impersonating Christianity and let the Holy Ghost take its place. There will be a revival will start on 8th and Penn Street. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to add anything to it. But I said there will be a revival start in Fortville that will sweep the whole country. No, not out of Fortville, not out of this camp. Oh yes. 
devil, you have fought against this camp. You have fought against the ministry. You have fought against the young people. Why do you think he's fighting it? Because God can do something. And if you've come to fight, you've come to the wrong place because we're not going to let you fight against what God can do in this church, what God can do with these young people. If we can quit all of these things and let the Holy Ghost take our place, then let the Holy Spirit start a revival that will sweep the whole country. Notice he says, quit the nonsense, get back to the Word of God. Dump out if you want to fill up. You let go and God will let come. I said, you let go and God will let come. Sorry, I'm just spitting everywhere. Y'all have to just dare with me. It's humid here, folks. I'm from the Panhandle of Texas. There ain't no humidity hardly there. So they said, you're, not, you're going to take your suit coat off. And they were right. You let go and God will, you dump it out. God will fill in all the petty things that you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you ought to do this and you ought to do that. But the prophet of God said, forget it. Forget it. In one place, he said, we raised the fence so high. Come on, brothers and sisters. We raised it so high that we, we can't let them see what God can do. No, just come to God. Get filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and let him take care of the rest. Oh, forget it. Dump it out of your soul, he said. Oh, we look back at the rich young ruler for a minute and, he, and see he had desire, right? He desired for something. But he knew who to go to. You know where to go to. And Jesus gave him the law, did he not? He said, this is what you got to do. And we find through this that, that he, he answered that I fulfilled this law. Right? And so, and Jesus didn't deny the fact, did he? He said, but yet you lack one thing. And as he, as he looked at this, he said, yet you just need to empty out one last thing. Something he was holding on to. You see, how can we be filled with the presence of God if there's no space for him? Uh, and what you, listen, I want you to really understand this, especially uh, you young people. What you're about to go through in life, and I don't know how long the Lord will tarry. You know, my grandfather used to make the statement. He said, you know, he could come tomorrow. And, I, and, and I've talked with my grandfather. He's going to be 85 this year. And, and, and I said, Brother, Brother Clark, I said, or Grandpa, I said, can you believe what you're seeing today? He said, Brother Jeremy, he said, listen. He said, when I was saying, I don't see how it could get any worse sin. And the Lord's got to come. He said, Brother, he said, it is so much more now. Not only that, but the things that God is doing amongst his bride. You see, I, I, I don't want to just keep pushing off and, and saying so much, and I'm not, trying to, I'm not changing the scripture, but we talk about types and shadows of greater things to come. You see, I don't want to keep pushing off these things to tomorrow. I think it's types and shadows of what we're living in today. But, I, you know, out of all these young, I don't know how many young people's here, maybe a hundred of you are here, whatever it may be, I, I don't do good with counting. But how many percentage of you will actually make it? Oh, oh, Brother Jeremy, you, you, all of them are going to make it. I think sometimes you've got to ask the hard questions. Sometimes we really got to understand, because I grew up with a group of young people that heard the same word that I heard. Seen the same power of God that I've seen. Seen mighty moves of God. Seen mighty acts of God. Heard the same prophet that I heard. Come on, brothers and sisters. And are, some are atheists today. Oh, you're going to blame it on the pastor. Well, how can I blame it on the pastor when he preached the word of God? And it struck my heart. Listen, I sat next to them. I was friends with them. I told my son, I said, listen. I said, the very friends that you're with today, you just don't, don't get so close to them. That, that uh, if they start to wonder, you wonder with them. You need to find God for yourself because the person that is sitting next to you, you'll think to yourself, you'll think, oh, they'll never leave God. You'll see, you'll see what five years will do to an individual. You'll see what one year does to an individual. Come on, you know, fathers and mothers, you're, maybe some of you have brothers and sisters that were raised in this message and heard the same word that you heard and are not serving God. You see, the question not, does not come down to how much you know about this or how much you know about that, but have we been turned to a new birth? Have we been pointed to Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? You see, I know so many people that can outquote this and outquote that, but have no life. Lord, empty me tonight. Empty me, Lord, so I can be filled with your presence. Because what you're about to go through 
demands a power from on high. All the knowledge that you have in this message gets you nowhere without the one that's inside. You listen to, you listen, you look at Peter. Did not Peter have a revelation of who Jesus was? Flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, right? Now that, that was before what? His conversion. But yet, he recognized who Jesus was. And even when the great falling away was happening, to whom shall we go, right? When all this was going on, he knew who Jesus was. But yet, he did not. He wasn't born again. He hadn't been converted. You see, so tonight, what are we pointing you to? Am I just going to point you to a moment of, of, of happiness? Am I going to just point you to one moment in a service where you feel good? Or am I going to point you to Christ, to where you can come in and you empty yourself out and you say, God, I need to be born again. I need to be changed in my life. I need you to empty out all of my knowledge. I want to start over with you, dear Lord. But Lord God, I, I, I'm sorry, but I've got to be honest with you. I feel pride. I feel pride. Pride is strong in young people. Oh, you don't like me now. You see, I still, I didn't say it was you. Oh, dear Lord, no. Yeah, man, I felt that. I need, my, I need to hide behind this. I didn't say, maybe it was because you got mad. Or maybe it was just the spirit. You see, pride, what is it? It's pride. Because, because I, I can do this, brother. I can do this. Let me try. I still, I, I'm a young guy, so I still remember what it was like to be a teenager and wanting to prove to my parents that I could do it and that I, that I could go this way. And guess what? I fall, I fell flat on my face. Oh, but Brother Jeremy, I'm not going to do that. Okay, bless God. I'm so happy for you. But if you don't find Jesus Christ and get born again. No, listen, listen to what Jesus told him in Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Oh, we don't need that today because all we need is, I better stop. God help us to stop devaluing the Holy Ghost. God help us to stop devaluing it. You see, we have been convinced. If we have not been convinced, young people, listen carefully. If you haven't been convinced by the Holy Spirit, then we are opening ourselves up for a fall. Notice the Colossians 2.8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are what? Complete. In what? Him. You're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now notice this word spoil. The word spoil now commonly means to corrupt, to cause to decay and perish, as fruit is spoiled by keeping too long, right? Right? But the Greek word here means to, uh, of spoil means, uh, in a sense, to plunder or to rob as when plunder is taken in war. So the meaning is to take heed lest anyone plunder or rob you of your faith and hope by philosophy. These false teachers would strip them of their faith and hope as an invading army would rob a country of all that was valuable. You see, Satan doesn't want you to be born again. He doesn't want you filled. He doesn't mind that you've come. He doesn't mind you singing songs and lifting your hands. In fact, we know, we see from the very beginning that there is worship in the seed on both sides. Worship was on both sides. In fact, the Bible speaks that uh, Abel's was a more excellent so you can look at that, but in my, in my simple-minded thinking, he said he was a more excellent sacrifice, right? I look at that as saying that Cain's must have been pretty good because he was specifying more excellent. So we see that if we're not careful, it comes into the beauty of it all. And, and in how it looks and how we feel and how much knowledge that we've attained. And we, and we see people, when they begin to find out that we're all human, that ministries are human, 
The prophet is human. Moses was human. But if we're always pointed to a man and we put our faith in men and they fail, then where is our faith? Get them to Christ. Get them to Christ. Because Christ never fails. Hallelujah. I didn't say your pastor was, was wrong. I just said he's human. <laughs> Luckily, I don't know your pastor, so we're okay. It leads us to this major question that we've been asking. Are we all right on time? I've been losing track. If you start to snore, it's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, why don't we, we have boys over here and girls over here? That's nice. You guys have no idea. I really can't see you. That's good. All right, now that you're awake again, let's get back into it. How convinced are you? Listen to this. If Satan influenced a third of the angels from a place of complete perfection, oh, man, ain't nobody going to get me. Well, what what Eden are we in? Satan's Eden. If Satan influenced a third of the angels from a place of complete perfection, if he influenced a perfect creation in the garden, how convinced are you in this Eden that you can stand? You see, the word convinced is completely certain about something. And I'm not talking about up here. Because there has to be true conviction in the heart that no matter what comes your way, I don't want to strike fear, but I'm just here to tell you that the road ahead that you're about to go through, young people, is harder than you think. It's more difficult than you can imagine. And being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost does not mean that it's just going to be peaches and cream and everything's going to be a bed of roses. But you have got to fight a battle. You're going to have friends turn against you. You're going to have family members turn against you. You're going to have churches fall apart. You're going to see pastors give up on God. You're going to see evangelists walk away. Where will you stand? I'm asking you, I'm I'm challenging you tonight to not just take this as something simple, but truly ask yourself the question, how convinced are you? Is there conviction in the heart? Because Christianity is not a convenient religion. Serving God is not a convenient religion. Paul says in 2 Timothy that all who want to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Well, that's it. I'm out. Oh, bless God, I didn't want none of that. I thought if I came and gave my heart to God, everything would be okay. Guess what, guys? It's not. It is, but it's not. You're confusing me, Brother Jeremy. I'm just going to remind you if you forgot, you're still in this stinking flesh. I know, as our brother said, you might have good cologne on him tonight, but it's still stinking rotten flesh. Hallelujah, I can't wait till we get out of this. So no matter what you're going through, no matter how close to God you are, you say, well, if I do this, it'll be all great. Why don't you just go look at the prophet and look at his life? Look at what he went through. How convinced was he when the black sheet went before his face? I don't want that kind of God. I want a God that as soon as I talk to him, immediate things will happen. That's not always the way it's going to be. It's not always going to be that way. Thank God when it happens. Thank God when miracles take place. But what are you going to do when the black sheet comes before your face? What are you going to do when all your friends turn their back? What are you going to do when you don't feel God? What are you going to do? You see, I want you to look at this. Let's look at a believer for a moment. And yes, he was a believer because he was born in it. The birthright was his. You automatically know. The birthright was his. Genesis 25, 29, and Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? Devaluing the birthright. doesn't matter. Listen, brother. Listen, sister. I, I, I've, I've got the message. I've got the books. I've got the tape. I've got the Bible. I've got church. I'm a pastor. I'm an evangelist. I can sing. I can play. You ever heard this? You're getting quiet in here. It's good. You're thinking. 
You see, it didn't matter. What what good is this birthright going to do to me? I'm going to die. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Listen, he devalued the spiritual seed line. Now, I know that everyone wants to believe we have to be careful that we don't go, you know, all that will hear is will come, and, and then we'll just sit idle by and not pray. Because why do we need to pray if all that will hear will come? Why do we need to have church if all that will hear will come? Let's just let it happen. Let's just let them do what they're going to do and see what happens. No, come on. Let's, let's wake up and shake ourselves from those thoughts and understand. Look at a prophet that prayed and prayed and got on his knees and did everything. And even uh, many years in his life, he looked back after doing hundreds of thousands more that I could do and even said to himself, I haven't even done anything. And I said, oh, God, if he said that, what about me? Oh, God, let us come back to moms and dads and young people. People that'll get on their knees, not only for their self, but for their brothers and their sisters and friends and family. Oh God, bring them to you, dear Lord. He devalued the spiritual sea line. And in our day, we could say he devalued the token. He devalued the Holy Spirit. He devalued the blood of Christ. What good is it anyways? I'm going to die. I want it to sink in. What did it? What caused him to devalue? Can you just allow me to say this? The Holy Ghost. It wasn't some big great sin. He didn't murder anybody. Come on, you still with me? He he didn't, uh, it wasn't some uh, uh, big old thing. He didn't go cussing somebody out. He didn't go, he wasn't, uh, uh, you know, just, just really out there. He simply fell by hunger. Now what, what, What does that have to do with me, Brother Jeremy? Because Satan will use, you see, we're focused on on the, the, the box. We're focused on the magazine. We're focused on the cell phone. We're focused on all these things, and we tend to forget that Satan will also use just life. You see, I'm not saying to do away with not focusing. I'm saying we've got to understand that Esau didn't fall by pornography. Esau didn't fall by uh, 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 television. Esau didn't fall by murder. Come on. He fell by life circumstances. Circumstantial life. Things that it's common to man, he fell by. I know it doesn't sit well with some of you, but it's your life that you have to understand that you're going to go through. And I have seen people give up on God because of problems in their life. You see, we have to understand that Satan will use anything and everything that he can to stop you. God allowed him to mess with Job's life. And he messed with his life. Job, listen, he had to, in one day, all of the hurt happened to him in one day. But yet he didn't fall. Now, he was a man. And he was praying. And he was struggling. But he stood. Oh, but that was Job. What about you? You today have even something greater than Job. You today have the the option of the indwelling of the Almighty God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go wait be in, until you are endued with power. You see, well, Brother Jeremy, I'm just hungry and I can't wait to get out. And then our minds in a church service begin to think about our jobs and we begin to think about our finances and we begin to think about this and we begin to think about that. And before you know it, we devalue a church service just by life. And that's how Esau fell. Because he devalued, please allow me to say this, he devalued that one service where Satan come and tested him by hunger. So I'm asking you tonight, what Satan used, or I'm mentioning Satan used a natural desire to influence the devaluing of the token. Where we find in the scripture, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Why? Because he devalued the birthright. 
I don't need it. Listen, I got cattle. Come on, look at Jacob. Jacob still feared Esau. Right? When he was going back, he still feared Esau. Esau still had people. He still had lands. Come on, bear with me. He still had church. Come on, he still had all kinds of things. He still had, he still had the word of God. He still had all of these things. But he devalued the token. He devalued what was the most important thing because he let life circumstances stop him from pushing through. There has to be an internal conviction and more than a mental conception. You see, because Satan, even right now, is trying to convince you to quit. I know you're tired, so I'm going to try to hurry with this. But I really want this to be the start of these meetings. I really want you to empty yourself out because God has some great things in store for you. God has some wonderful teaching. God has some wonderful ministry. It all comes together in these meetings. And Satan wants to stop us from getting it. And he wants to think that it has to happen a certain way. We get into our mind that meetings have to go an exact certain way. And I say, let's come and empty ourselves from how we think it should be and say God how do you want it to be tonight let your presence move in this place I empty myself out Lord if it's only me if I'm the only young person God if I'm the only one here let me be here surrounded by your presence why because of where we and you see so many people are listening to enticing spirits instead of taking the word of God brother Brenham said he said spirits they're in the world they're demons And they go out into places, they get amongst men, ministers, hello, they get amongst church members, oh no, y'all all all angels, no, no, he said they do, they get amongst good people, and they cause them to come into an illusion, and they say things, and do things, and teach things, and practice things that's contrary to the word of God, they were enticed to it they begin to take their thoughts over the thoughts of God this is how I see it this is how I believe it should be and we begin to create our own camp and we begin to create our own following listen as long as we can get people to follow us it must be right how good has that worked out for every day I mean ah. come on folks I told you I'm gonna be myself it didn't work out very well it's not working out very well listen this word cannot come to that There's got to be a young person. There's got to be a pastor that says, Lord, it's not about me. It's not about my ministry. It's not about how I preach. It's not about how I pray. It's all about you, Lord. Lord, if if you can use a donkey, you can use anybody else. I'm no better than a donkey without you, Lord. Fill me with your presence. Let me stay humble before you. Let me draw closer to you. Let that your presence can move through this place and convict souls. You cannot tell me, brothers and sisters, that the heat of this age hasn't been turned up because we see it on every hand. The squeeze that is coming, the minds that are being turned. Listen to what Brother Branham said in Laodicean Church Age. How strange in this age of plenty, in this age of progress, in this age of abundance, how can, how can there be trials? Well now, it is strange, but in this age of plenty and opportunity, when everyone has so much and there is so much to be had, What with all the inventions to do our work and so many things to give us pleasure, suddenly we find mental illness taking such a toll as to alarm the nation. Listen, I I know you guys are probably, I heard the smarter east you go, the smarter you are. The further east you go. Did I say the smarter east you go? (laughs) See, I already told you I'm not very smart. The further east you go, the smarter you go. So you guys probably know more than I do on this, but I, I just had to really look in this because what did Brother Branham call the greatest battle ever fought? Oh, but we can't talk about that today. Oh, I beg to differ. I don't know about you, but you got a mind tonight, and it's been fighting against you. <laughs> I'm glad some of you are honest. Praise God. I love honest people. I, you sisters are all wonderful. No, nobody's, your minds are great, I'm sure. Between 2017 and 2018, 19% of adults experienced a mental illness. 19%. An increase of 1.5 million adults. An increase of 1.5 million adults with mental illness from the previous year. 1.5 million increase. That's just under the population of Indianapolis, somewhere around there. Think about the whole population of Indianapolis. 
and think about that was the increase of give or take of mental illness. Oh, we don't have it in the message. If you, if you say that, you're missing it because Satan will do whatever he can. You So Satan, I'm calling you out tonight. You're not going to win this. You see, rates of depression. Oh, we don't have depression. Okay. That demon is out there, but we're going to call him out. Rates of depression increased by 52%, 52% between 2005 and 2017 among adolescents aged 12 to 17 years old. If you're aged 12 to 17, lift your hands. It's a lot of you. Okay, thank you. 52% increase. The rate of depression increased by 63%. From 20, uh, 2009 and 2017 in young adults, 18 to 25. 18 to 25, raise your hand. A little bit less of you, but... All right, so I'm talking about this. I'm talking about your groups. 63%. The rate of suicide-related thoughts and outcomes increased by 47% from 2008 to 2017 among young adults. And in 2019, there was an estimated 51.5 million adult, adults aged 18 and older in the U.S. with some sort of mental illness. From 2019 to 2020, any mental illness in that range rose from 26 to 27 percent, going from around 970 million to 1.2 billion people in the world. Now, somebody tell me. What happened in 2020? We know what happened. What do you think it was? So what are, what are you saying all this, Brother Jeremy? I am trying to tell you that we are fighting. The prophet pointed it out. And we want to hide under the sand that if we just get everybody excited, it will somehow go away. But it needs to be called out. We need to understand that Satan is fighting with our young people. You say, listen, he fought me with it. I know at least twice in my life so much that I remember feeling the, the cold knife against my skin as a teenager. Ready to push it in because in, in my mind I thought I'm no good to my church. I'm no good to my family. I'm no good to my brother. I'm no good to anybody else. I'm not worth being here. Even as a pastor, I know you guys got perfect pastors, but even as a growing up pastor and learning this, Satan attacked me with that same thing. You're not a good pastor. You're not going to be able to help the young people. You're not going to be able to do anything else. But miracle after miracle, God began to call that demon out. You say, I, listen, you tell me you don't know anything about it. I can stand before you and tell you I do because I faced it right between the eyes. I looked at that suicide demon in the face. I looked at depression in the face. I fought it because of the grace of God. I would have died. I would have lost without the grace of God, without acknowledging that I needed the Holy Spirit to take root in my life and move me forward. Oh, you say I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'll never face those things. It's a lie. Satan will do whatever he can to attack your mind. You're still in this old coat. You're still in this flesh. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to discourage you. I don't know what it was that just came through here. But I, listen, I, maybe you didn't like it. Maybe I made the enemy mad. But I want to just tell you, you can't do it without God. You can hold the Bible on one hand and hold the books on the other hand. But if you're not born again and filled with his spirit, you won't make it. you got to have a power that's inside. you got to have that power. What did Brother Branham say? He said, when everybody ought to be happy. You should be happy. Why aren't you happy? You don't know what I'm going through. The parents are facing more than they've ever faced before. The pastors are facing more than they've ever faced before. The evangelists are facing. You young people are facing more than they've ever faced before. My children are facing more than I face. I say, oh God, let me stop and slow down and take the time to deal with them directly. When, when, when do we get back to a point? You say, Brother Jeremy, what are you trying to say? Get back to facing these demons directly and stop just pushing it off to just a quick moment. Deal with it directly. God, I need you. 
I need you more than anything else. How many here tonight, by uplifted hand, be honest and say, Brother Jeremy, I have faced depression before. Why don't you just look around? Look around. Say, old and young alike. You see, I, I, you know what does, can I just be, I'm going to be me, here it is. You know what did good for me as a, as a growing young man was to see a pastor that was willing to admit when he needed to change. Was willing to admit, you know, the Lord began to open this up in my life. I realized where I was at wasn't quite what I needed. To admit that he, was, he made mistakes. You see, if we're not careful, come on, parents, all of us, if we're not careful, we try to place us up so much on a pedestal that the young people think, I can't attain that. But I'm here today to tell you, if it wasn't for the grace of God, ain't nobody would be here. We've all had to come to a position more than once. How many times did Brother Branham say, I just needed to get away and get close to God? I just needed to get away, right? Come on, sometimes we just got to get away. And, you, and I'm not just saying that you got to go fishing or go hunting. Those are all great and fine and dandy. But there's nothing also like coming into this place and to the presence of God where we can just come and, and push aside our friends and push aside all of our differences and just lift our hands and say, Lord, consume me. Lord, I know that I can't make it without you. I need you, Lord. I empty my life before you, Lord. Because Brother Branham said, the age boasts of spiritual attainments, but the people are less sure of themselves than ever. You say, I don't believe that, Brother Jeremy. Let me just tell you, you haven't been in some of the prayer lines or the prayer services that I've had. Come on, pastors, ministers, evangelists. Come on, you know what I'm saying? With how much the word of God has been opened, I have seen more times of praying for people that are less sure of where they stand. Why is it Satan is trying to deal with the mind and trying to get us to think about all of these things? He said they're less sure of themselves ever. The age boasts of better moral values and it is more corrupt than any age since the flood. I'm going to try to skip through some of this. It says they are miserable. That means they're objects to be pitied. Pitied? They scorn pity. They are full of pride. What is this? He speaks of this being a neurotic age, right? Age of neurotics. What does that word mean? It's an emotionally unstable individual. That's what it means. Emotionally unstable individual. That's why when we preach the word of God, we do not want to point you just to emotions. Because if you go that route, you become even, you're unstable in that. I've seen it before when somebody would jump and speak in tongues and run out and curse God the next day. I'm not against speaking in tongues because I'm thankful to God that it can happen. I've seen people run around a church and go right out and, and curse God the next day. You see, it's not about what it is. But listen, let me tell you something. I also have no problem with God touching and changing somebody's life. And you get so excited, you don't know what to do. You may start running. You may start clapping. You may fall on your knees. You might not say a word. But listen, I'm not here to tell you what to do. The only thing I'm here to tell you to do is that get so much of God that you don't know what to do. You see, that's what we need to get to. We need to get to where we try to quit manufacturing a presence or a move and just say, God, I just want to be changed. Lord, if I just stand in your presence, if tears just fall, or if I shout, hallelujah, I'm going to do it because it's in my heart. Not because this one says I have to do it, but because I, I've, I've been changed. I've been changed. That depression is gone. I'm filled with your presence. Oh, listen, there's only one bird built to handle this age, and that's you. To be able to handle this prophetic, to be able to handle this age, and that's that prophetic eagle. And what are we? You see, if we start out just pretending we're Christians, and I'm coming to a close shortly, so bear with us, without getting back to the very basis to be born again, you'll blow up somewhere Along the road. I said this. I'm reading what the prophet said. Letting off pressure. He said if you, if, you, if you just start to. If we start pretending. Like we're Christians. Without going back to the very basis. Yeah, I've seen it before. You see people that go off into the world. And they come back. And they're like hey I'm back. Pat me on the back. Uh, and they don't come to repentance. 
They come back to what? They just want status. Listen, if we get to a place where we think this is all about status, we're so focused on position that we lose purpose. We want a position of deacon or a position of this or a position of that. Bless God, you better not pull me from that position. You've lost your purpose. It's not about what you do that the people see. It's the purpose. You read the scripture tonight and find out what the purpose of man is. The purpose of man is in the scripture. Read it for yourself. You say, well, why don't you tell me? Because I can't give it to you all. Sometimes you've got to study for yourself. What's the purpose of man? Oh, that I can be up in front of everybody. No, sir, I'd rather be behind there. I'd rather be in my camper right now hiding from you. You don't know me. I'm afraid of you. But God, who is rich in mercy, drags me up here and says, do it. And I say, okay, Lord. You see, it's not about your position, your, your, your carnal position. It's your purpose in Christ. You see, if you are not, if you don't go back to the very basis to be born again, you're going to blow up somewhere down the road because the pressure's too heavy. You can't stand it unless you're built for it, and you can't be built for it until God gets a hold of you. Not to just polish you and not just polish you up, but start you from the beginning and bring you to a real magnum, a real child of God that's built to stand the word, built to stand the pressure, the pressure of the day. And that's why this message has been given to us to be able to withstand the pressure of this hour without the message that was given to us. And what did that message do? It pointed us right back to Christ, pointed us right back to the day of Pentecost. What was the most important? important okay now don't answer yet because this bear with my folly what was the most important thing of the day of pentecost the bible says in the beginning and they were all in one accord in one mind right if that didn't happen could the second part happen i know we want to focus on the after part which is awesome that's great but without the first part which is where satan is getting us He's getting us to be separate from, what, from the word. He's getting us to be against one another. He's getting, you say, why are you going back to this? Because it's what God's saying. He's getting us to fight. If you want the power of God to fall in your life, you've got to get in one mind with Christ. Oh, I will as long as they get on my side. That's not what I'm saying. I don't even want you on my side, even if I am on the Lord's side. I want you to look at Christ. Don't look at me. Look at Christ. Look at Christ. What did the prophet say? Look at Christ. It's Christ. It's Jesus Christ. You've got to know him yourself. So where are you tonight? Where are you this evening? Let's bow our heads. Why are you here? What's your purpose in life? With all that God has in store for you this week, I want you to come just to this one point. And please just listen. You've got to empty yourself before God can do anything for you. I'm thankful for what you've had. I'm thankful for the knowledge you've attained. I'm thankful for your jobs. I'm thankful for all of these things. But tonight, if you don't empty yourself, you see, you've come to the right place. You didn't come to me. You didn't, uh, you didn't come to the pastors here. You, di you didn't do that. You didn't come to uh, you know, Brother Siebert and all of these brothers that are here. You came to Christ. So now that you're here this evening, Lord, here am I. I believe this message. I believe all of these things. But God, I recognize right now that I have to empty my mind. I'm so tired. Yeah, I, I'm so tired. I'm tired of this struggle. I'm tired of this battle. Listen, I'm going to tell you, it's going to keep coming. But you've got to be filled with that presence of God to help you get through this. Are you tired tonight? And I'm not talking about in body. I'm talking about just the spirit and the mind. It's just... Wore out. Brother Jeremy, I'm tired. I'm wore down. It's been a fight. The, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm so confused and uh, so much that is going on. Lord, I, I just need you tonight. Maybe this isn't for everybody. 
And as I just go by this leadership, as they, yeah, play something softly, please. Just will you be honest with your heart? I have come to this reason, and maybe I didn't come for the right reasons. But God, I feel you speaking to my heart. I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to leave this place sorrowful because I can't let go. I've been hurt, Brother Jeremy. I'm a victim. I'm a victim of the past. I'm a victim of, the, of, of, of this problem. I'm a victim. Oh, yes, the, there's so much victim mentality out there. We, we all want everybody to look at our, our victimized lives. Oh, look at me. No, God, I'm here tonight, and I, I, Lord, I just want to let go. The only way I feel to do this, and this is just complete honesty, if you say, Brother Jeremy, it's me. I want to pray for you. I want you to just come forward and stand. And any of the ministers that are here, would you just, you don't have to lay hands on them, but if you're here and you're ministers tonight and you feel the opening of the Lord, would you just come up here and just stand in front of them as well? And let's just pray together. I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want to empty myself out, Brother Jeremy. I, I feel God calling me higher. I know there's more for me to have. I, I have a calling in my life, or, uh, and, I, and I think Satan's trying to keep me from it. And, and I don't, I don't want to let those things uh, fall away, Lord. I want to draw closer to you. I want to clear myself. God is here tonight. This is not about me. This is, this is not about anyone else that is next to you. This is simply you and God. I'm here tonight. Lord, as we call on, give him a few more minutes, Lord. Please deal with the hearts. This is not about anyone else. This is about you, Lord, and what you can do for these individuals. They're honest tonight, Lord. They're desiring for you tonight, Lord. And God, they want you to do something for them. They want to be so filled with you, God. They don't want just religion, Lord. Bring them, Father, I pray. Oh, if you feel just a little tug in your heart, if you feel just a tug, don't, don't think about it. Don't let your mind talk you out of it now. Brothers and sisters, don't let it. Don't let Satan talk you out of this promise. Don't be talked out by a circumstance now. Don't be talked out by some circumstance. Don't let some earthly problem talk you out of it. This is your moment to start these meetings off right, to start this camp off right. I want to clear my mind of everything. I've been hurt in the past, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this is happening, but it doesn't matter. This is your chance. This is your opportunity to do this. All right. I believe the honest hearts have come forward. And uh, ministers, I, I don't know who's all here, but just right up here closer to the, so I can see. And maybe if you, some of them want to come over on this side in front of the sisters. This is a faith. This is a unity together. Brothers and sisters, God is here. Don't you know that this is more than religion? He can move down the aisles of our heart right now. Look at the ministry that's here before you. God has called these ministers. God called men. Lay the burdens in their heart for you. And they're burdened for your souls. They're burdened for you. They want you to empty yourself out. You're a good person. You're a good sister. You're facing struggles and you're facing battles. It's hard, I know. You're tired. But there's a God tonight that can meet that need. Thank you for your honest hearts. Now, everyone else that is here, would you please, just with all of your heart, would you, would you stand and would you pray with us all? Would you, would you get past the differences? If you're online tonight, would you get past the differences now? Would you just see the ones that are standing before you? Let's break the chains that bind us and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we bind together in the name of Jesus Christ. We call out every demon that's in this place. We call out every demon that's in the mind. We call out depression. We call that hurt. We call the victim mentality. Oh God, all of this confusion, everything that's around, the ministry that is standing here, these young people, oh God, they're here before you. They're, they want to be broken, Father. They want to be mended by you. Lord, I pray that you would help them empty out. 
Lord, help them empty out their problems. Help them to empty out their circumstances. Help them to empty out, oh God. And Lord, I pray that when they empty everything, God, that you would fill them with the presence of God. Oh, young people, it's more than just being empty tonight. Would you ask God, fill me with thy presence right now. Fill me, Lord. I want to be filled with you. God, I know you have a word for me. I know you have something for me. Would you do it tonight, Lord, I pray. Lord, you see the hands of every young sister. You see the hands of every mother. You see the hands of every young brother, of every father. You see the hands of the ministry that is here right now. God, they're here for one purpose, Lord, and that's for you to change them, and that's for you to fill them. Oh, God, the ministry, we empty ourselves out. The musicians, we empty ourselves out. The singers, we empty ourselves out. God, fill us with thy presence. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now, can you just lift your hands and thank Him? Just thank Him now. Worship Him for what He's doing. Worship God for what He's doing. Oh, hallelujah. Can we sing that? Consume me, Lord, one more time. F sharp. Can you do F sharp or F is fine? Amen. Let's just, we're going to sing that song, Consume Me, Lord, one more time and mean it from your heart. Hallelujah. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Meet it from your heart, young people. Consume me, Lord, and make me more like you. from your heart. Let me be how you felt. Do you trust him tonight? And make me more like you. Oh, make me more like you. Break me, Lord. And bless the broken pieces of my life. Oh, let me be you. As your, as your eyes are closed now, I'm asking for your supernatural imagination. I want you to see your heavenly Father standing before you. His arms are open, and He's asking you, do you trust me? Do you trust me enough right now that I've got this? I got you before the foundation of the world. You were in my thoughts. I knew the moment that you would take your first breath. I knew the moment that you would be right here, right now, in these meetings. Do you trust me enough to stop trying and just let go? You see, lifting up the hands is as an evening sacrifice, right? But the lifting up of the hands is also a sign of surrender. I surrender. I don't know if I can sing it. Do you know how to sing I Surrender? Can you sing I Surrender? Yeah. Lift up your hands. I surrender. I surrender. I trust I you. I surrender. Can you say it? I surrender, Lord. I I'm tired of trying it. Come on, young sister, surrender. Young brother, surrender your heart. Lord, I surrender. Do you know what he has in store for you this week? 
know the word that he has to feed you this week. The ministries that God has, the, the fellowship that he has for you. I surrender, Lord. I surrender my thoughts. I surrender my life. Mold me, Lord. Make me, Lord, into your image. Lord, I surrender my life. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. Let's sing it again. I surrender now. Would you sing it with them? Lift your voices now. I surrender. everything out of our lives. We give our heart to you, Lord. Lord, I surrender my life. Oh, yes. I give it all to you. Amen. Just take this time now as we turn it to our brother. Just worship the Lord now. I Open your heart. Surrender. God bless you.
gentle timidness that's the Holy Spirit that's what camp's all about is bringing the presence of the Lord and then surrendering your heart to the Lord and letting the Holy Spirit come and tell you you need to empty this out you need to empty that out appreciate the message Brother Shriner amen just to empty out that's what tonight's all about Lord I'm going to open the door I'm going to start dumping some of this stuff out of my life tomorrow Lord I'm going to be washed by the water of the word I'm going to dump some more stuff and Lord, as you dump out, I want to be cleansed, Lord. I want to be justified. I want to be sanctified. Amen. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be changed. How many want to be changed? I got my hand up. I want to be changed. I don't want to leave this camp like I came. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we go tonight, those are praying, just feel free to stay as long as you want. And the lights stay on all night. You can pray all night. That's what camp's all about. That's what these altars are for. Altars are not just where saved people go. Altars in the Bible is where living things go that have to die. So if God speaks to you in your heart and you know there's something that's not right in your life and it's alive and it's, how many know what I'm talking about? Something's alive. You say, Lord, that thing's alive. I'm going to go to the altar. I'm going to kneel down. I'm going to let that thing die. Lord, I'm going to let it die as Christ was crucified. I'm going to let this thing die in my life. Whether it's pride or lust or envy or strife or fighting, whatever it is, Lord, I'm going to let it die. And we'll just come in the presence of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit is a discerner tonight as you're here. And as you go to your rooms, the Holy Spirit will touch and go down in your lives and start discerning. And that's where you just say, Lord, I want it gone. I want it cleaned out of my life. Amen. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's just been a wonderful first service, Lord, breaking the ice and bringing the presence of the Lord. Father, that's what we need. I need, Lord. The leaders need. The young people need. All of us together, Lord. We need this presence of the Holy Spirit that will dig deep in our lives, Lord, and root sin out of our lives that we can empty out, Father, that you can pour in the Holy Ghost and give us a life that will live above sin, Lord. Live above evil, Lord. Strengthen us tonight, Lord, as we've poured out tonight. I pray you'd bless the service tomorrow, Lord, the ministers as they would labor, Lord, to find your will. I pray you'd bless the young people as they've come to camp to draw closer to you. You said, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Bless each one tonight, Lord, as we go from this building. May we not go from your presence, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and ask it. Amen and amen. Oh, Lord, I believe you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Oh, 